Hey, Martin, I've got something to show you today. Take a look. This looks like an IDE with the Cloud Run Hello World app. Uh, Brian, I think we've seen this on serverless expeditions many times before. Ah, uh, probably, but have you seen it in an IDE running in a browser tab backed by the cloud? <gasps> Whoa, Brian, how did you do that? Well, it's a, it's a web-based IDE hosted by Cloud Workstations, which is an on-demand development environment um, with a dedicated VM and container for each developer. It's based on Cloud Shell, the console at the bottom of our web thing, if you've seen that before. Ah, that's cool. Now, how do I create one of these myself? Well, let's do it right now. OK, so if we go over here, this one is configured for general Google Cloud development using Code OSS the open source base for Visual Studio Code. So it'll work really well for serverless work. And that development environment I mentioned, these are defined using container images. So each workstation pulls the image, runs that on the VM for the developer, and we proxy connections, SSH, TCP connections, and we proxy them both over HTTPS with authentication. And now we're back to that Hello World app. The home directory for you as a developer is saved between sessions, so you can customize things and start and stop the workstation as needed. Very nice. So it looks like you created the workstation here from a template. Uh, now, who makes those templates? Yeah, so that's going to be an administrator or maybe you know somebody on your team, tech lead, things like that. And here it is. This is where we configure a template for those workstations. Primarily, that's what container image to use and what kind of VM to run it on along with security settings. There's also a cluster, which I've already configured here, and you need one of those per project. And you can share it across all these configurations, the templates, and use it for multiple workstations. It takes a little longer to start, so I won't show it right now. All right. And uh, you said development. What kind of development would you use these workstations for? So they are on-demand environments, uh, accessible from anywhere that you have web access, from any machine with a browser. Um, and you can customize what's on them. So you can use it for almost anything. These uh, base images are Docker images. That gives you a consistent environment across teams or within a team. And I think really helps with both that kind of like works on my machine problem, but didn't work somewhere else, and for faster onboarding. Um, and because it's a container image, you can customize it. Uh, we have templates with support for multiple IDEs, such as VS Code, the Code OSS uh, version. Uh, IntelliJ and their various um, IDEs like PyCharm, Writer, and more. And like I said, it's container rich, so you can customize it, uh, add new extensions, libraries, IDE plugins, things like that. Right, right. So that all sounds useful, but I think it sounds really useful about this thing where the permissions, you have the permissions in the cloud rather than on my local machine. Because when I test on my local laptop right here, some things don't translate well to the cloud, like IAM permissions. Oh, yeah. I think that's what I'm most excited about personally. I've coded over SSH you know, in a terminal for years because I don't think you can really ever create the exact same environment. So this helps with things like you, you mentioned, the permissions being different or networking behaving differently or things like that. And I think it will save a lot of time in troubleshooting you might have had otherwise. And now that IDEs can run in a split mode where you have like remote code and local GUI, uh, I think it's the best of both worlds. And Workstation makes it really easy to configure that for usage on a whole team. And OK, so team, you said. What kind of teams or developers uh, are these workstations meant for? Personally, I think it's most useful for at least medium-sized teams. And you know, maybe large organizations will be most excited about it. You know, it really gives you that standardized dev environment if you've got um, security things you need to be consistent across, you've got certain things you want to set up for everybody. It's really useful there. Anytime you've got to onboard new developers quickly or switch projects a lot, it's very useful. Yeah, at my last developer job at a startup, it took me the better part of a week to get my machine set up with all the tools and permissions. Uh, so I want to try this out. Could you guide me, Brian? Absolutely. I'm a docs person, so I, I would recommend checking out the docs first because there's a few concepts that are worth kind of getting settled. It's a pretty small set of stuff, and then give it a try. Excellent. Thanks for showing us this, Brian. Totally. And thank you for having me. You know, Check out the docs. Give it a try on your applications. And this, the whole point of this is that it's customizable. So give it a go, please. Very good. I will include that link in uh, to the docs in the video description.
And thank you everyone for watching. If you have questions for Brian about these workstations, please add them in the comments. Also, let me know if there are other serverless topics you'd like to see in future episodes. We read every single comment. Until next time! <music>